Train. Where are we at? Oh, yes. Hayes, Hayes sounds what they call me. We are back at again to see my friend, Michael Jackson, Prince, two of the greatest artists and musicians to ever live. Hated each other, but here's why. But having said, let's go. You can't have a conversation about music in the 80s without bringing up both Michael Jackson and Prince. Facts. In terms of pop, the two practically define the era and irrevocably Facts. alter the course of modern music. But with such dominant forces comes a bit of friction. There was definitely a bit of a there can only be one dynamic between the two. The two icons paralleled each other throughout their respective careers. Prince debuted with For You in 1978. Jackson debuted as a solo act the following year with Off the Wall. Prince released. Really? So they debuted? I didn't know they debuted within a year of each other. That is interesting. Hmm. Hmm. 1999, in which Jackson countered with Thriller, therefore Wait, provoking Purple with. Rain, and so on and so on. This back and forth, however, was not limited to the charts. As you will soon find out, it got petty, and at one point, downright deadly. Here's the full details on Michael Jackson and Prince's legendary rivalry. Randy, that was not necessary. In most articles comparing the artists, they were depicted as polar opposites. Jackson was the innocent man-child to Prince's rebel. Jackson was the mainstream commercial juggernaut, while Prince was the alternative avant-garde challenger. Jackson was magic and wonder. Prince was sex and transgression. As the New York Times noted in 1984, no, no, don't, don't shortchange Prince like that. I'm just saying, that. relax, relax a little bit, relax, relax. <laughs> you kind of shortchanging Prince right now. Relax. If Mr. Jackson's message is "all you need is love," Prince's amounts to "all you need is sex." But for two artists who are so individual and iconic irrespective of each other, it is uncanny how much the two artists had in common. Both were born the same year, just months apart. Really? Both artists came out of tough Midwest cities with strict disciplinarians as fathers. Both believed in musical fusion and surrounded themselves with racially diverse collaborators. Both played liberally with notions of race, gender, and sexuality, idolizing the likes of Sly Stone, Stevie Wonder, and James Brown. It is fitting then that their first known interaction was during a James Brown New Year's Eve concert in 1983. Really? At this time, Jackson's career was shattering records and had reached groundbreaking new heights after the release of Thriller. While Prince's breakthrough album 1999 was receiving widespread acclaim from critics, and the two were often compared and pitted against each other in the press. Michael Jackson was invited on stage where he sang and dazzled the audience with his dance moves. After Jackson's crowd-thrilling performance, he then leaned into Brown's ear and dared him to invite Prince up to try follow-up. Prince accepted the chance to impress. Is that true? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is that true? Michael Jackson was on stage with James Brown and whispered in his ear, I dare you to bring Prince up. Like, I don't, I don't I'm not, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that. Unless Prince and Michael had a conversation before they went on stage. I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing that. I'm sorry. Where he sang and dazzled the audience with his dance moves. After Jackson's crowd-thrilling performance, he then leaned into Brown's ear and dared him to invite Prince up to try follow-up. Prince accepted the chance to impress his idol, but was not ready to perform at his best. He came on stage, attempted to play a malfunctioning guitar, and then was going to swing over the crowd on a lamppost. But he didn't realize it was only a prop and the lamppost with Prince on it crashed into the crowd. MJ mocked him tirelessly, and according to Quincy Jones after the show, Prince was so- Hey, stay ready so you ain't gotta get ready, Prince. <laughs> I'm just saying, stay ready so you ain't gotta get ready. I'm just saying, hey, hey, I'm just, hey. I ain't picking sides here. I think people should know what side I'm on, but I'm gonna try to be unbiased. I'm, I'm trying to speak for both sides. But hey, stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. And probably Prince was kinda um probably was disoriented at the time. So he probably wasn't at his best. So that's kinda unfair to Prince as well. But again, stay ready, so you ain't gotta get ready. Ha ha! The king won up. <laughs> I just play, I just play, I just play. There is it is a king and a prince. There's a difference. But I'm sorry. I'm, 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 okay, okay, okay. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Devastated that he got humiliated in front of James Brown. Aww. That he tried to run over Michael backstage. What? 
To add insult to injury, mere months later, Prince and Jackson competed for the same accolades at the Grammys. I love how he said, oh yeah, he's trying to run over Jackson backstage and just glanced over that. Like, what do you mean he tried to run over Jackson backstage? What do you mean by that? Look how he just glanced over that. Hold on, run it back, run it back. But he didn't realize it was only a prop, and the lamppost with Prince on it crashed into the crowd. That's MJ hilarious. mocked him tirelessly, I and according too. to Quincy Jones after the show, Prince was so devastated that he got humiliated in front of James Brown that he tried to run over Michael backstage. To add insult to injury, mere months later, Prince and Jackson competed for the same accolades at the Grammys, where Prince left empty-handed and sat back to watch Jackson collect a record haul of eight Grammys. Stoking his suck desire to, to reach equal heights, to be similarly recognized for suck his work. To suck. <laughs> later that year, Jackson observed the musical and cinematic phenomenon of Purple Rain, which quickly became Prince's most critically and commercially successful release spending 24 consecutive weeks atop the Billboard music charts. Damn. In 1985, Prince's Purple Rain beats Michael Jackson's Thriller at the American Music Awards for fa- You know what? We ain't gonna do that today. If you wanna watch my video on Prince versus Michael, look up Prince Pur Purple Rain versus Thriller. But... Was Michael there? Wait, is this the infamous award show that they did, um, We Are the World? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I'm wondering. I don't know. Did he say what year it was? Four consecutive weeks atop the Billboard music charts. In 1985, Prince's 85. Purple Rain beats Michael Jackson's Thriller at the American Music Look Awards at fit, though. for That's favorite pop rock album. Later that night, a horde of A-list musicians recorded the famous I know We Are the World charity single, which Jackson oversaw with Lionel Richie and Quincy Jones. Prince and Jackson are supposed to have a verse that they sing to each other. The two had met for lunch as organized by Jones, really? but Prince is a no-show. Later that night, Prince is spotted at a Hollywood club against his manager's advisement. In the book Let's Go Crazy, Prince and the Making of Purple Rain, the singer's backing guitarist Wendy Malvoin says, I wasn't allowed to say the real reason, because he thinks he's a badass and he wanted to look cool, and he felt like the song for We Are The World was horrible. The following Prince, you made Purple Rain. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing gangster about Purple Rain. <laughs> you made beautiful ones. You made... Okay, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm just saying, I don't know. I think he was just smelling himself too much. From what I, I'm, I'm trying to take sides. I'm just saying, sounds like Prince was just smelling himself a little bit too much. Because to say that we are the world is a, I just, I do not want to believe that. I do not want to believe that. I refuse to believe that. That is, but then again, this is the same nigga <laughs> that I believe heard bad and said, I don't need to be on that. Here, Quincy Jones attempted to get the two stars to make amends through a musical collaboration. Jackson had written a song named Bad, and the producer sees it as a potential duet with Prince. What an epic showdown that would have been. Picture it now, the vocals, the instrumentality, the faux masculinity from knife fight dance choreography. Prince was supposedly on board until realizing it would require him to sing the lyric, Your Butt Is Mine, to Jackson. Don't worry, this record will be a big hit even if I'm not on it, Prince said at the time. It is later revealed that Prince gifted him with a box of voodoo artifacts, and Jackson was convinced that Prince was trying to cast a spell on him. Jackson allegedly stated around this time that he doesn't like to be compared to Prince, calling him rude and nasty. It's not fair he feels like I'm his opponent. I hope he changes because, boy, he's going to get hurt. Wait, he's the type that might commit suicide or something. Wait, what? Wait, wait, what? what, what, what what's your reference? I need, cita I need citation. I need a reference to this. What? When, when did Mike say this? You say, good boy, you're going to get hurt? What? First of all, <laughs> for a prince to send him some voodoo stuff, and he's like, oh, yeah, he's trying to 
put a hex on me. Actually, I would believe that. Because I'm like, bro, why are you sending me voodoo stuff? Like, respectfully. The, the fuck? <laughs> um, by the way, shout out to Prince. This fit always be fitting. Um, even if it's a little bit extravagant. But then again, Michael Jackson is extravagant as well. But, like, again, yeah, I just, I don't. I, Prince is such an interesting character. You hear We Are the World. You hear Bad. It sounds like you just didn't want to work with Michael Jackson. Because to say, well, I don't want to say your butt is mine. Okay. To me, see, here the thing. To me, if I'm Michael or Quincy, I can easily just take that lyric out. It's not uh, essential to the song. So if it's that much of an issue for you to where if he communicated, I don't like that one line. I can't say that line. I don't see why Michael and Quincy could have just took the line out or Rod Temperton, whoever was working on it, take the line out and replace it. Like, I don't see why they couldn't do that. So, I don't know. Again, it sounds a little shaky, baby. I don't know. I don't know. Trying to cast the spell on it. (laughs) Jackson allegedly stated around this time that he doesn't like to be compared to Prince, calling him rude and nasty. Mm. It's not fair he feels like I'm his opponent. I hope he changes because, boy, he's going to get hurt. He's the type that might commit suicide or something. As their 80s glory faded and the 90s rolled on, both artists dealt with the aftermath of multiple personal blows. Jackson's child molestation accusations and Prince's heated dispute with his record label. There were multiple times when Jackson re- That's, 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 two, that's two different things. That's not just, you can't compare. That's two different things. Like It's not even close to each other. Like, Michael's all, almost locked up, won't let me out. No, let me out. I'm locked up, no, let me out. Oh, won't let. Like, it was almost looking bad for your boy. Like, it wasn't. That's not close. That's not close. Reached out to Prince about a potential collaboration. I think it would be just great, Jackson reportedly told Prince over the phone. The phone. Although, a joint effort never materialized. In late 2006, Will I Am arranges for Jackson to attend a show during Prince's Las Vegas residency. Prince knows where Jackson will be seated, and in a strangely sexually charged moment of dominance akin to that found in nature, Prince emerged into the crowd, swung his hips, and slapped the bass hard in Michael's face. This was something that probably could have been written off as showmanship if it weren't for the fact it was so damn deliberate and so damn public as though it was some kind of payback for the humiliation he was subjected to in front of his idol James Brown 20-some years before. MJ was quite upset by the gesture according to Will I Am, and is quoted to have said the following over breakfast the next day. Why do you think Prince was playing bass in my face? Prince has always been a meanie. He- <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just like... Why do you think he was playing bass in my face? Like, yo, this is insane. Like, if this is, if all this is real, this is insane. Like, these, uh, we'll talk about it at the end. We're almost done. It's just a big meanie. He's always been not nice to me. The following year, Jackson was already willing to forgive Prince with an invitation to join him on a planned comeback tour, in which Prince was quick to turn down. Michael seemed pretty disappointed about it, a source reported. Although after Jackson's death in 2009, Prince seemed to have gained a new perspective on his torturous relationship with Jackson. As reflected in a 2010 Ebony interview, Prince spoke about how he and Jackson discussed the difficulties of balancing religion and fame, and that he wishes he'd spoken to Jackson about the struggles before he died. When astronomical talents such as Michael Jackson and Prince exist in the same time and space, it's easy for comparisons to be drawn. Both parties work tirelessly. Jackson and Prince exist in the same time and space. It's easy for comparisons to be drawn. Both parties work tirelessly to strike out as individuals, only to be lumped into a single existence by others without a second thought. And on their end, it's even easier to feel frustrated with sad comparisons. As part of their legacy, the only hope is that both artists are recognized for their individual talents and impact they both made on the world and its music. Tune into one of our latest videos right here. 
And also check out our online store for. I just, man. So first of all, <laughs> you want me to be real, son? <clears throat> if you want me to be real, I think it's two things. One, I think a lot of this has to do with that James Brown concert to where Michael completely showed out Prince. And we all know that James Brown is both Michael's and Prince's idol. I think that hurt him. Print hurt Prince. And I think the second issue was the media. The media has a weird thing to where they like to pin well in, well anything of competition or anything of artistry they like to pin against each other that's in sports that's in but they have a weird thing to where they like to put people against each other the same thing with the east coast west coast the east coast west coast hip hop beef in the mid 90s I don't think ever would have been a thing if the media didn't create it cause they did but I think it's the same thing for Prince and Michael I think Instead of allowing Michael and Prince to be their own entities, they had to compare them for whatever reason, even though they're nowhere near the same artist. Not even close. But yeah, those quotes, some of those quotes, I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I believe that fully. I don't know. Some of them quotes from, from yeah. But uh, let, me, let me know. If you are Prince, what song what you have did we are the world or bad what what song you think was what song would you have done if you were prince um but like comment subscribe share all the things are the things and the, and the fact that i just learned not too long not literally just recently when mike died prince like locked himself in his hotel for like days and only talked to his security guard so it's like prince um it's probably a thing to where prince always thought they would have had time and allowed that pettiness to get the best of him and again i'm not it just it happens it happens it just sucks we never got great music a great collab from both but then we got there's a lot of great collabs we never got we never got whitney and michael we never got Prince and Stevie what like there's a lot of class we never got so just a shame that those two really that bad I, like, I do not I do not know how Prince doesn't get on bad like that just bothers that just bothers me but uh like comment subscribe share other things other things ain't gotta go home do gotta get to step in peace I know.